All right, so for our YouTube subscribers, this is video two of two that were designed for a blog post. Little snippets from one of our online member workshops, but not specifically designed for YouTube. So you might find some useful information in it, but it's probably not what you're typically expecting for YouTube. So keep that in mind and have fun and happy painting. I have a real quick, quick comment. Okay. I wonder if most of us out here feel really, really confident of getting our painting to the point where it is right now. It's that final finishing stuff that gets me and, and keeping it loose that while way. finishing it. Uh, I can understand that. But Robin, part of that just comes from what we talked about in the last, last session with this one, where just working with the big brushes and big loads of paint rather than smaller ones, it, it really, it seems like it's going to take forever sometimes. But I started getting a a really strong handle of doing that within two years. And that seems like a long time, but really in, in most of our time as painters, and that was going from scratch. Most of you are starting with a lot of background knowledge already of color mixing and all of that. I'm talking about from the time I started using oil paints to really having, and it was probably faster than that, but I'm being conservative. With, within two years, I was really getting these broad brush strokes and, and working with big shapes the way that I am in this video. So if, just go for it. You know, take some, take paper and take things that you don't, you're not worried about. It's inexpensive and you, you don't have any, any real investment into it. Just take big sheets of paper and practice with, and I know paint can be expensive for some, but it's, it will propel your skills much more quickly than you can imagine if you just practice it. Don't just practice, you know, I mean, you might just take and do some big broad brush strokes on paper. Use that paper to actually make some paintings. And you may be thinking, well, if I do a nice painting and I like it, and then it's on this paper and I can't do anything really with it. But that's just, <laughs> that's just part of being an artist. If you're worried about that and you can afford to, then do it on, on the regular canvases that you use. But don't use anything where you're going to fill constrained by like, oh, I, I can't mess up because this canvas is expensive and I, I just can't waste a canvas like that. You know, don't use anything where you're going to worry about that. Just take it and go for it as far as the-, wouldn't, the material, Wouldn't you using student grade paint also help that if you're practicing? That okay, so work? that depends. Some people, uh, there are some professional artists that use student grade paints like the Gamblin 1982 or Winton or something like that. I used, I tried some of those in the nineties when they were coming out with some of those paints like the Winton. And I didn't like them because the, the pigment load was so lacking. They put a, that's the reason why they're so much cheaper is they put a lot less pigment in them. If you're trying to increase your understanding both of the brush strokes and the like uh, layering one color on top of another to see the effect of that when the bristles are spreading apart, you know, depending on what technique you're using. You know, let me take this off of full screen here so you can see since I'm actually talking with you. Okay, so um, if, you, if you're trying, it, so it really depends. If you're just working on a brush technique and you're not worried about nice color, you're not worried about uh, the actual look that you're going to want to have in your paintings as far as uh, how the colors are going to look and all of that sort of thing, then it won't matter what kind of paints you use. Um, you could even use, I don't know, watercolors or something. You could just use anything just about. But if, you, if you're wanting to see how it's going to look when you actually put it on a painting that you're going to want to keep, where the, like you're laying, layering, um, one type of color. So when I say color, I'm talking about like when I'm mixing my paints, I usually under mix them. I'm not wanting to have one flat, solid uh, color shape with a color. Like you can identify this as, oh, that's baby blue or, um, you know, whatever. I'm looking, I'm talking about striated color mixing where, where I mix some colors together, but I under mix them. So you can see that there's a mixture of colors that are in there. So, um, but okay. I take, so I take that mixture, I put it down and uh, it might be big shapes of color in the very beginning of my paintings. Um, but then when I go to put another layer on top of that, uh, if I'm doing like a dry brush kind of a layer where the, where the bristles are really broken up, 
because I want to have some of that underlayer coming through. Um, that's what I'm talking about. So if you're wanting to see how those are going to look, then you might want to use professional grade paints, the paints that you're going to actually use when you paint on a regular basis, because then you'll see how it actually looks. You see what I mean? So if, so if you're just, if you're just practicing the technique of, of big brush strokes, it probably won't matter. Um, okay, I thought we were going to that. It probably won't matter at all, Robin, which one you use. All right. Um, yeah, so just, I mean, you could even use uh, some tinted gesso. You know, that would be pretty inexpensive or some house paints even. You know, anything that's cheap, uh, those are even cheaper than, than the student grade paints. So just, I would just use then anything that you can get that's really inexpensive just to practice using your brushes fluidly. So that's a great question though. I like that. Thank you.